Look at uh, Deuteronomy 30, 15. Now it's up to you to believe this. Yeah. Not me. I already believe it. I already believe it. I'm just trying to show it to you. That's it. So now I has not seen, neither ear heard. Neither has it entered the heart of man what God hath prepared for them what? Love him. Well, if you love God, this is prepared for you. Well, I love God. You question my love for God. No, are you questioning your love for God? How about his love for you? That's why we got this beautiful cross right here. He proved it. Hi, darling. I love you. You're my friend. Um, he says, listen. I have set before you. Did he set it before us? Life and death. And people look at this book like uh, he didn't set it before me. Well, here it is. Now, what I think maybe the problem is hearing. Faith comes by hearing, but so I also believe that faith comes by seeing. Yeah. You see the complete work. Yeah. How many see heaven right now? How'd you get? How'd you see it? He showed it to you by faith, and you took it. How'd you receive healing? He showed it to me. Are we gonna die at some point? Everybody, I'm just not going to let him steal my life. I've made up my mind, sin will not have dominion over me. Life does. So he said, listen, I set before you, did you or didn't he? Yes, he did. What did he set before us? Life. Life. Who in their right mind is going to choose death? Nobody. But yet, every day that you walk, every day that you talk, you, you choose life or death. Well, I wouldn't be, I'd be a fool to choose death. Well, then tell your mouth to shut up. Well, I'd be lying. No, you'd be, for the first time in a long time, you'd tell the truth. Life. Grace and truth came by Jesus. That's it. Did we have any truth before then? Yeah. But the reality of truth is now in right here. Yes. The reality of truth. Right. Yes. I spent nine, almost nine hours on Friday going to hear my pastor. Mm -hmm. See, well, pastor, you said that this morning. I'm trying to get home to you. <laughs> Somewhere out there in the middle of uh, spirit land, there are some words for us. Yes. And my pastor is anointed to preach to uh, me. That's why your pastor is so important. Right. And your prophet and your teacher and your, they're so important to you. Yes, they are. Do you know that God gave me you all to get the burr out of your saddle? How many have ever had a burr in your saddle? Well, if you just let sheep roam around, they'll get some burrs in their saddle. I've had a lot of people that said, well, I don't need a pastor. Well, what do you need? You need the word. And the anointed word of God, if the man of God is doing what he should be doing, the anointed word of God comes to you. So I'm so in life. Well, I like a XYZ pastor, and I like XYZ teacher, and I like XYZ because they're good. Are they here? You know, I am, I am more and more, the further I go, I want you to sow anywhere you want to sow. But the next time you need somebody to say grace over your death, 
Call TBN. They will tell you we ain't coming. Go to your local. See, God has anointed me to get the bird out of your saddle. Now, I might, and I don't mean to, I might create a few birds while I'm trying to do that. <laughs> he said, listen, I have set before you this day. How many believe it's this day? How many believe it's tomorrow? No. It's this day. Every day is a day with God. Well, I'm just not gonna believe every day is a day with God. I go to I go to God every other day. Then you get every other day your revelation. Yeah. Well, I can live on last week's revelation. You want to bet? No, last week's revelation. Let's go to uh, X Y Z Hamburger Place and I said we got last week hamburgers there. <laughs> How about some last week French fries? Man, that sounds good already. How many would love to have some fresh mm, strawberry pie? It's amazing how somebody's strawberry pie, like my daughter-in-law's, it's it's fresh every day. But when she's finished with it, How many know the word of God is good fresh? That's why he anoints it. He anoints it. He said, listen, choose you. You do the choice. I don't choose for you. I go in that prayer closet and I stay with God all week and I come out with this stuff. And uh, choose you. Not me. I've already made my choice. Who you're going to serve? You're going to serve what? Blessing or cursing? How many of you are going to serve some cursing? No, thank you. See, I can't get nobody to raise their hand when I say that. I don't know if you're born again, I you are, but I don't believe you'd raise your hand if you weren't. Well, I'm going to serve a little cursing today. No, it says no. Look at verse 16. In that choosing life, in that choosing life, in that. Is that what it says? So in that choosing life, it says what? This day to love the Lord, thy God is a walk in his way, and keep his commandments, his statutes, his judgments, so that we can live and multiply, and the Lord our God will bless us in the land where we go to possess it. So in that choosing life, all that's in there. You made that choice, so all of that stuff's there. I'm going to say one more to you in uh, Proverbs and uh, Proverbs 18, I think it's 22. Proverbs 18. Say it, Mom. Proverbs. 18.21. Can you read that for everyone? 18 Proverbs. Proverbs 18 verses 20 and 21. Oh, hang on a second, Pastor. Hang on a second. Hang on. A man's belly. I read that last week. Oh. It was good. How about meditating it day and night till you observe to do it? There you go. All oh, that's written there. Then you'll make your way what? Prosperous. Prosperous, and you'll have good, good success. success. Now, now I don't want anybody to do this, but this morning I, I, was, I was a little taken back, Vicki. When God looks at you and says you're going to be a millionaire, and whoever you lay your hands on, how many did you lay hands on? Five or six, maybe? And, and then a few later. A few later. I was the first one. You're the first one. See, I learned this book is for those that believe. Yeah. And it's a work. 
How many knows it's a work to believe something? Yes, it is. I believe I'm going to heaven. Well, you're going to work from the time you believe that to the time you get there. You're going to get there. But you got to work at it. Work what? Work your faith. That's what this is. This is a work of faith. Yes. It works for those that work it. Right. Well, I know somebody and they worked it and they died. But they didn't work this. If they went to heaven, they didn't die. Now you're going to heaven. How many of you are going to heaven? But we're looking for a little heaven on earth, Mom. Yes, I now, I will not submit to death because I chose life. And people are going to think you're a what? Nut. Nut. Well, some of you, they might think you're a nut. If you tell them, man, I went to church this morning and somebody laid a hand on me and I'm a millionaire, and they say, well, you nut. But wait till you get to million. Let me try Proverbs here. Verse 20. A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth, and with the increase of his lips shall he be filled. Death and life are in the power or the hand or the authority of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. So obviously you can hate it. You can hate doing it. It might be a bother to do it. You might not believe in doing it. But I can I can tell you this out of experience. I've experienced that kind of experience. Yeah. My tongue sometimes don't want to work with my mouth. But we got a promise. So it's a death and life are in the what? Power. That word is so rich. Power. That means God gave your tongue power. Well, have anybody in in here ever cussed anybody out? You don't have to answer it. So it's amazing what power you think you have by doing that. Well, just pop over here. Does anybody believe that you got the power to build with your mouth? Yes. You can build what? Anything you can think about here. Now, is that going to take overnight? No. It's going to take right then. Faith is now. And so what I find is that they said, Patrick Ryder, are you going to build a house for the sanctuary? Build. Yeah, I got to build it with my mouth. And so I got all these chairs to build with. Yeah. And somebody else bought them. But they empty. So would you believe with me that there's somebody to build to put those chairs yes. under? Yes. I remember we used to be in here and this place would be packed. Mm -hmm. Packed out. Now I've got, we've got under authority, we've got about eight different ministries under authority. But in order to build them, you still have to build them with your mouth. Yeah. So if I'm cursing the vision, wow. That's good. am I tearing it down or am I building it? it well, I've learned people over the years can tear something down. Yeah, they, can, with their they say, well, we're not going over there because we don't believe that they are called to do that. So what did they just do? They tore down what they could have believed if it happened. See, I've learned it's just as simple to believe and say it as it is to don't believe it. I can believe it, Dorothy, is healed. Well, now, Pastor, I mean, you know, how are you going to believe that? Because the book says so. So all I see is a burr under a saddle. Well, I believe in this and I believe in that, and I'm but good. Is it coming out of your mouth? 
Because until it comes out of your mouth, you're not building. Right. You're tearing down. That's right. So it says, well, I know that was good, but death and life are in the power. Power, P-O-W-R. What does that mean? Hands or authority. The what? It's actually, it's actually translated hand. It's translated hand. Hand. Yod. But it actually means in the authority of. So if I put something in your hand... I'm giving you authority. So he gave the tongue the authority of life or of death. So now, I'm just asking, what's he going to ask you when you see him? Were you building or were you tearing down? Well, I just got so scared and I was so fearful and... I just feared death. Well, the Bible said that Jesus broke the fear of death. So the question would be, are you fearing death? Well, uh, it comes at me all the time. It can't be. I had the same opportunity. I just figured I'd just start building. Building what? Building life. So every time death came, I said, no. Say that, no. No. I am not going to submit that. Well, what if you die anyway? There you go. See, you're not settled yet. You're still up and down like a hill, yo. The Bible says, let patience have a, that you might be. So if you're still building one day and tearing down the next, maybe you ain't got a perfect work being done. Maybe the perfect work, maybe the perfect work is you being perfect with your mouth. Well, I don't believe that. I, you, know, you know, what do you believe? Because what you believe will be coming out of your mouth. Now, Pastor, you mean we're going to go through this confession thing again? You shouldn't have stopped. Yeah, I got so bored with it. You got bored with confession. Then you weren't building, you were tearing down. The Bible says, I'm going to give myself to life. Well, Pastor, do you know how tiring it is just to say scripture all the time? I went to uh, Rod Parsley's house, and uh, he's much bigger than we are, and... uh, he had 6,500 seats with Brother Copeland there, and 4,000 full. Was there room for anybody else? Yes, <laughs> So it's just like the same thing that happened on 9 11. I have some friends that were in 9 11, and uh, he was going up the World Trade Center to his office, and he got at the elevator, like the 91st floor or something, and just as soon as the door opened, he, he hears his voice said, run, and run now, and don't look back. Guess what he did? Ran. He didn't look back. You know, then I heard a prophecy many, many, many times over. God was speaking to everybody. Just only a few people were listening. But we have a huge testimony of people that were here. Now you say, well, I'm hearing, and, and I'm hearing. And if you're hearing, I've learned this now. It's coming out of your mouth. Because you're a constant planter. You plant life or death. And then I, this one God really said, listen, I've heard Brother Copeland I've heard that tape a hundred times. I said, did you learn anything? How many knows God has told story after story after story after story several, 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 several times? Why? So we'll get it. I've learned, how many times did we tell our kids, don't do that? And they what? Did it anyway. 
But did that stop us from saying not do that? No. 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 Every, matter of fact, I know your good mom's dead, but every time they did something that you didn't think was going to help them, you what? Told them not to do it. And I used to tell my kids all the time, my son's right here, but I used to tell my kids all the time, now daddy don't whip you. You do that again. How many of you ever said to your kids, I'm going to whip you if you do it again? Did you whip him? Yes. <laughs> See, God does this over and over and over again. You know why? So we'll get it. So he showed his own ignorance when he said, I've heard that message a hundred times. How many heard the message of salvation over five times? Why? Well, uh, I'm always saved, but it was for somebody else. Oh. So salvation is a one-time deal, and you'll ever, ever, you're never delivered at that again. I say salvation is every day. Every day I'm learning something new every day. Every day. Then I'm learning something new every day. I say I learned I get paid every day. And people look at me and said, man, you're weird. So are you. <laughs> what sounds better to you now? I get paid every day. How about this one? I don't get paid at all. I never get paid. Does anybody like that one? Just go right ahead. Of course you don't. How about this one? I fall down and skin my knee every day. I am tired of it. Life and death are in the what? Well, I'd be lying to myself. You're already lying to yourself. If it doesn't line up with the word, what is it? Not true. Come on, let's say, you have to just taste it one more time. I said, okay, fine. If it doesn't line up with the word, what is it? A lie. It's either truth or a lie, one or the other. But if I told the devil he was a liar, you'd be, you'd be close to Jesus. <laughs> Jesus called him a liar and an adulterer and a murderer from the beginning. Yes. So now, if anything comes in your mind that doesn't line up with the word, what are you going to do? Cast it down. I cast it down. That's not part of my covenant. Right. How about fear? Everybody should have a little fear every now and then. No. Who said that? Was that Darwin? What did Darwin say? Darwin said, uh, you need a little fear every now and then. Fear is good for everybody. No, it's not. Is fear good for everybody? No, it's death. He said, well, your dog will jump off the roof if he doesn't fear hitting the ground. How much you going to bet? I bet I can put my dog on the roof and he will not jump off. Let's do it a little bit further. I bet I can put you on the roof. And you won't jump off either. I believe I'm going to jump off and land on my feet and nothing will happen to me. We all want to see that. Would you wait and do the appointment later so we can all be there? <laughs> and we won't want to. I never forget one time I was, I was high as a kite, smoking dope. Drinking liquor, Terry. I'm not talking to you. I'm just telling, talking. I'm telling my testimony at you. And so I was on, I was in this building. Did that translate? Yeah. I was in a building, and I was 28 feet from the. I was on the second floor. And I was high as I could. I don't even know why I'm remembering this. Lord, take the time to remember. So I visited about four or five guys. Fred, I'm not talking to you, I'm just talking. And I was with the four or five guys, and I said, I'll meet y'all at the bottom. They had no idea what I meant. I didn't know what I meant. But I jumped over the rail and met her at the bottom. Eighteen hours later, I woke up.
How many, how many knows I didn't choose life at night? I chose for death. Well, you stupid, ignorant, dummy guy. Oh, really? So you've never done anything like that? Everybody's going like this. Let me help y'all. Some of you are going like this, some of you are going like this. Death and life are in the power. It's got the power to build and it's got the power to tear down. Now, would healing be in the power of the tongue? Yes, yes. Yeah, what if I die? There you go again. No. You're born again, you don't die. You don't die anyway. You <laughs> change clothes. I can testify that. <coughs> I died and here I am. I said, well, what do I do now? He said, you're going back. I said, going back what? I didn't say that. He said, you're going back. They won't let you stay. They're calling you back. Yes. Now, if you've never been in that situation before, you might not know what I'm talking about. That's being in the Spirit on the Lord's Day. Yes. How many knows when you're dead, your spirit's still alive? Yes. And so... Is your spirit what life is here? Yeah, because Jesus said my words are spirit and they're life. So if I don't have this in my spirit, what do I got? I'm just asking. I either got death or I got what I think, which is death. Am I done yet, Terry? No. Oh. I got one more. Can you have one more? Yeah. Let's go to, uh, oh, I better go back here a little bit. Let's go back to Deuteronomy and let's try old 20 something. No, that's Exodus, that's not Deuteronomy. Well, maybe it is Exodus. Well, then let me look. Jerry, stop it. All right. Sure, I'm glad you came back. Exodus. Oh, let's look at 33. Exodus 33. And let's look at verse 13. Some of you grab your bowels now. Can anything good come out of the Old Testament? Absolutely. It's knowledge and understanding of the New Testament. Yes. So he said, now verse 13, read verse 13, Mom. Now therefore I pray thee, if I have found grace in thy sight, show me now thy way, that I may know thee, and that I may find grace in your sight, and consider that this nation is your people. And Just he said, my show presence. Show me something. Now this is the same guy that found that water came out of a rock. This is the same guy that asked God to feed four million Jews while he's out on the desert. This is the same guy that, the same guy that asked God to put the Ten Commandments on stone yes. and then cut them out. And then he picked them up. Well, this is Moses. Well, who are you? Child of God. You're a child of the living God. So here we go. This is about believing something. Yes. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. It's amazing. How much something is more important to you when you see it? That's the truth. And you can't see it. I've learned over the years you might think it differently. But I don't think you can see it until you say it. I believe you can see an image of it and it'll show up a little bit. But when you are saying it, God's writing it. And suddenly you got it on you in your heart 
want something that's in your heart, it's very difficult to get out of you. Satan tries his best and can't do it. And the Bible says that we're to resist him steadfast in the faith. Faith comes out. So he says, show me your glory. How about if I found grace? Well, grace and truth came by who? So we got grace, don't we? Now, if you know what grace is by seeing it, stand right where you are and tell me what grace is. Anybody? Grace is favor. Favor, okay, I'll take that one. It is where he honors you. Favor and honor. Anybody else know what grace is? Oh, I'm scared to answer this. Amen can answer it. Huh? Oh, he's dead for us. Grace is God's ability to work in her life, what she can't do for herself. So, can you see that? Can you see grace? Yeah. Now, if grace and truth came by Jesus Christ, what else came by Jesus? Salvation, benefit, favor, life. How about healing? Oh, no, Pastor, you're saying I've got to see healing? No, 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 I didn't say that. I tell you, if you want to be healed, say enough that you'll see it. All that's written there, the Bible says in, in Joshua 1 and 8 that I'm to meditate. So I'll see it. You know what the problem is, I think, right now? Apathy. You're seeing something, maybe not you all, but people are seeing something, but they're not seeing life. You know, well, I went to that church and uh, I gave my hundred dollars and uh, I didn't see nothing. What are you on? I hear that from everybody. Pastor, we came here for a while and we tried that tithing stuff, but it didn't work for us. Oh, you're the only one it didn't work for. It It worked for 2,000 years and before that, and now you're the only one didn't work for. Would you say there's a problem with you or with him? With me. How about prosperity? Well, I tried that prosperity stuff. I even went to a Joyce Meyer concert. And uh, I heard what she said, but I gave her my fifty dollars, and uh, I didn't. I didn't have no hundred million dollars for it. Part not. Maybe could it be that you gave it for the wrong reason? What about time? Anything that any farmer knows that you don't plant a seed and get a harvest immediately. Now that God can give you a harvest immediately. How about a harvest of healing? But but we have How to plant. plant. We plant for a harvest. We plant for a harvest. Well, Pastor, uh, what would be a good healing scripture for me? Because I'm I'm gonna do it. How about First Peter two twenty four? He bore my sin. He bore my sickness. And say it till you see it. It's amazing what you'll do when you see something. I've been watching track and field for years, but when the guys are running the nine second, 9.8 seconds, when they see that finish line, it's amazing that burst of speed right in the middle. When you're a champion, you, you see something. And you don't give up until you get it. He says, show me your glory. Now I'm gonna give you I'm gonna give you just a little inside in that. Maybe you'll maybe you'll, you'll take it. Look at verse 19. 
And I said, show me your glory. And he did. And then what did 19 do? Well, I've already heard this from, no, it's, not, it's not heard it. Are you doing it? Listen, I would think, as long as I've been doing this for 34 years now, I would think that we'd hear it and double. How many thinks that salvation for an individual that's not saved is important? This place ought to be full. Yes. Obviously, it's not that important. Come on. But are you condemning us? No, you condemn yourself. I don't condemn anybody. I preach life. And uh, I've learned over the years that if it's important to you, it's important to God. So is the souls of men important to us? Yes. yes. And this church has proved it over and over and over again. But do we need to do it over and over again? Yes, we got to keep doing it. You, you, can't, you can't sit on success. I just thank you, Father. You cannot sit on success. Because the moment you do, you'll get comfortable. Complacent, apathetic. So now verse 19 says, and he said, I will make all of my grace. So now could, could he not have had some more grace to show us? I think he showed us Jesus Christ, who grace came by him. Now, we all know we got it, but is there anything in it? Is grace a container for something else? Yeah. yeah. Grace is a container for graciousness. God's benefit. His favor. How many can use God's favor on something? So he said, show me your favor. No, no, Lord, no. I'll never show you my favor. Show me your healing power. Show me my million dollars. Show me your wisdom. Show me your heart. Now, if you don't want to see what his heart's like, don't ask him. Because the first thing he'll do is show you somebody else. So it says that I'm going to make all my goodness pass before you. So let's just look at this little tiny, little tiny container of grace that has all this unbelievable goodness. So he says, now, just feast down all you want and get as much goodness as you want. There it is, right there. And you say, no, just don't give me that much good. Don't give me that much goodness. Well, give me your portion. I'll take it all. He said, I'm able to make all. So, I'm just asking now, do you think there's some that we have not seen yet? Do you think there's a part of God we have not seen yet? If we got it all, we in real trouble. But we do have it all. But we're not acknowledging what we got. Why? Because it's got to come out of your mouth. Right. Now, how many got the healing power of God? Does it come out every day? I said it every day. How many, how many people in here have got his prosperity? I got his prosperity every day. Well, does it come out of your mouth? Yes. Yeah. Thank you, God, for your prosperity. Thank you for your grace. Yes. Now, uh, you. Reverend, this is one I'm with. I say this every week, every day. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your goodness. And show me what you showed him about your goodness. 